Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Apoy from the University of Arizona and I'm glad to tell you about our project Nautilus, a space telescope concept designed to carry out a very large scale search for signatures of life in the galaxy and the novel technology that enables this. I'm speaking on behalf of our Nautilus team from the University of Arizona, Ohio State University, Korea Basic Science Institute, Northrop Grumman and MIT. Between 2009 and 2018, NASA's Kepler Space Telescope observed hundreds of thousands of stars looking for events when planets pass in front of their host stars. During these planetary transit events, small parts of the stellar disks are occulted by the planets, making the stars appear a tiny bit dimmer for up to a few hours. With this technique, Kepler has discovered over 4000 extrasolar planets, planets that orbit stars other than the Sun. Based on the number of discoveries, we now know that most stars in the galaxy likely harbor planets and, excitingly, that planets similar in size to Earth should be very common. These discoveries elevated the importance of questions that humanity has pondered about for millennia. Are we alone among the stars? Is life common in the universe? Among NASA's highest level strategic goals today are the search for life in the universe and the understanding of the diversity of Earth-sized planets. Studies show that the presence of life may be possible to deduce from spectral signatures indicating the presence of certain gases in the planetary atmospheres. For example, for Earth, the presence of molecular oxygen is a good indicator for the probable presence of life, a so-called biosignature. Current telescopes, however, are not powerful enough to probe exoplanet atmospheres for biosignatures. The upcoming James Webb Space Telescope, NASA's largest mission in the works, is not designed to search for biosignatures. In the best case, it may be able to probe a couple of planets for some relevant gases. The Astro 2020 Decadal Survey, that will advise NASA on major next-generation space missions and science goals, is currently considering an ambitious flagship mission concept, LUVOR. LUVOR builds on the James Webb technology, but would have a primary mirror with 16-meter diameter, instead of Webb's 6.5-meter, giving LUVOR a much larger light-collecting power. LUVOR is designed in large part to spatially separate the light of extrasolar planets from their bright host stars. LUVOR is expected to be able to search for signatures of life in 30 to 60 planets that may be broadly Earth-like. It is also likely to cost well over $10 billion. But are 30 to 60 planets enough to understand systems as complex as Earth? What if we need more planets? What if we need a thousand exors to understand these worlds and to identify alien ecosystems? In 2016, our team began work on a space telescope concept that is capable of studying a thousand exo-Earths. To achieve this goal, we needed to reinvent key components of space telescopes and rethink the prevailing paradigm. Our concept, the Nautilus Space Observatory, provides an order of magnitude greater light collecting area than even the LUVOR concept. With nearly 2000 square meters of light collecting area, Nautilus can use planetary transits to study light filters through the planetary atmospheres to search for signatures of life in a thousand worlds. To reach this collecting area, a telescope with an effective diameter of 50 meter must be built. To develop the Nautilus concept, we had to ask the question, why can't we today build a 50 meter diameter space telescope? Indeed, space telescope diameters, perhaps the most important metric of performance, have been increasing only very slowly. For over the past 30 years, the increase has been only slightly more than a factor of two. Another factor of 2.5 increase is projected to take at least another 25 years. We realized that much faster progress is in, in increasing space telescope capabilities is possible if we change the paradigm in the following ways. Instead of building single, highly complex, unique prototype telescopes, let's build simpler units that can be easily replicated. This distributes costs and risks and leads to scalable designs. Instead of a single, very large diameter, coherent telescope, we can use an array of telescopes that incoherently combine or digitally co-add intensity measurements or images. While this does not have the same spatial resolution, 
The area will have the same collecting area and therefore sensitivity. And it is a simpler, quicker and cheaper uh, design to build. We can also now make use of the newest generation of heavy rockets and largest fairings. To realize this vision, we needed to make the unit telescopes much cheaper to fabricate, integrate and operate. Cost analysis identified the primary mirror and its supporting structures and uh, the science requirements they drive as a major cost component. So we embarked on building a space telescope without a primary mirror. The idea that replacing primary mirrors opens a gateway to simpler but much more sensitive telescopes is not new. Over the past two decades, two projects, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory led Eyeglass and the Ball Aerospace DARPA project Moari have explored and demonstrated the potential of ultralight diffractive lenses to replace reflective primary mirrors. In spite of the successful tests, these designs suffer from high chromatic aberrations and very long focal lengths that made the concepts impractical to implement. Over the past four years, our team at the University of Arizona developed a new type of lens that solves these problems. Our multi-order diffractive refractive engineered material or MOD lenses provide ultralight optical solutions for very high quality imaging with compact configurations. This animation shows how a conventional lens is substituted by a much thinner mode lens. A conventional lens forms the image of the source in the focal plane. We can replace the front surface of the lens with a non-continuous surface, a multi-order diffractive optical element. This element also acts like a lens but in itself produces a less perfect image than the conventional high quality lens. We can replace the back surface of the lens with a single order diffractive lens. Now the combination of the multi-order lens in front, the refractive properties of the glass and the single order lens in the back surface provide a very high quality imaging system. In essence, a three element lens with an excellent performance. Unlike a conventional triplet lens, however, the mode lens is packed into a few millimeter thin disc. Our team holds multiple patents on the mode technology and has built, demonstrated and published measurements with prototype telescopes based on mode lenses. These images show our first mode telescope prototype and its diffraction limited imaging performance on a standard Air Force target and in a real life situation at the University of Arizona softball field where the same resolution is reached. Mode lenses have multiple important advantages over conventional reflective telescope systems. They provide a hundred times lower weight than traditional mirrors. They are hundred to a thousand times less sensitive to misalignments. They are shaped through controlled direct local processes and can be fabricated via replication technology. There is more flexibility in their optical design and it is even possible to incorporate a simple instrument in the lens design itself. Mode lenses also have a disadvantage. They are potentially narrower wavelength range with diffraction limited performance than a perfect mirror based system. However, for practical purposes, this is not a constraint. Our team at the University of Arizona, Ohio State University and Cora Basic Science Institute, funded by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, is rapidly progressing the technological readiness level of mode lenses and space telescope concepts building on them. Our work produced multiple generations of mode lenses, gradually increasing their diameter and improving their imaging performance. We have identified two pathways to fabricate and replicate mode lenses with as large as 8.5 meter diameter, mostly building on existing and demonstrated technology. Based on the mode technology, we developed a space telescope concept that aims to revolutionize how we build and operate space telescopes and also break the aperture size cost curve typical to the current space telescope paradigm. The goal of the concept is to enable the ambitious search for life in a very large sample of potential Earth's analogs, the search that requires a vast light collecting area. The Nautilus Space Observatory, 
consists of about 35 identical unit telescopes, each of which contains an 8.5 meter diameter mode lens and have no primary mirrors. The unit telescopes are designed to be simple and robust, with their costs and risk management benefiting from the replication that underpins the units. Each unit telescope is launched in a compact configuration and once in orbit uses a simple robust deployment method to deploy the 8.5 meter diameter mode lens. We currently envision an inflatable spacecraft deployment mechanism, although other solutions are also available. Launching a compact configuration is important because our goal is to launch not one, but many Nautilus units in a single launch vehicle. The SpaceX Starship's cargo fairing could launch as many as 15 units. A taller version of the fairing could likely launch up to 25 units. The NASA SLS B2 system could launch comparable number of units. With only two three launches, an array with a light collecting area equivalent to that of a 50 meter telescope can be established. This animation shows the Envision deployment Individual Nautilus units are released from the fairing. They jettison their launch container and deploy. The units of the Nautilus array can be used as individual telescopes, each of which with more collecting power than NASA's Hubble and James Webb Space Telescope combined. But when all units observe the same target, signals from their detectors can be co-edited, and they will be orders of magnitude more sensitive than any telescope in space. The unit telescopes are not formation flying, the area is resilient, the loss of any single unit would not affect significantly the overall performance. Our team has also proposed to the Astro 2020 Decadal Survey the development and launch of the first Nautilus unit telescope as a standalone powerful space telescope, the Nautilus probe. The Nautilus probe will revolutionize studies of extrasolar planets, the distant universe and the faintest objects in the solar system and at the same time also demonstrate the complete set of capabilities required by the Nautilus Space Observatory. So in summary, the robust search for life requires rethinking the paradigm for space telescopes. We introduced a new technology, multi-order diffractive engineered material lenses. Through the MOTE technology, we believe that a paradigm change in the ways we build space telescopes can be achieved. We hope to usher in an era where the price of space telescopes is greatly reduced potentially enabling consortia of universities to launch their own space telescopes and, at the largest diameters, enabling NASA to launch a flagship class observatory with orders of magnitude greater sensitivity than the current space telescope paradigm allows. The Nautilus Space Observatory builds on ultralightweight optics that are cost-efficiently replicated, providing an array of lightweight, low-cost telescopes that can be launched simultaneously, Risks and functionality are shared between units, and this provides a new paradigm for space telescopes, one that is scalable, highly sensitive, and lower cost. The Nautilus Space Observatory's goal is to determine the diversity of Earth-sized planets and to search for life, and will have the capability to characterize a thousand potentially Earth-like planets. It will also be an extremely sensitive telescope uh, and revolutionize time domain astrophysics and studies of faint objects. With a telescope such as the Nautilus Space Observatory, we will be able to study in great detail a thousand Earths and finally answer the fundamental question, how common is life in the universe?